Good morning, good morning, and good morning. I bring you greetings from Kingdom Worship Center, where Bishop Greg and Pastor Tanya Dennis are our set gifts. I am Dr. Tracy Wheatley, and I'm so excited that you decided to pause right here with us on this morning. This is my co-host. I'm Deacon Tavon Elsie Young, and we want to say thank you for joining us again this morning, yes. and we want you to prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, as well as your spirits yes. as we transition into our worship service and the word from Bishop. Gregory Dennis. Absolutely. We are so glad that you're here. I'm ready for the word. Me as well. Let's worship together. Yes, come on. Come on, put your hands together. We serve a good God. We serve a faithful God. There's nobody like him. There's no one above him.
bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we bless your name, Jesus. Take a second and just worship him. Say something to him. Say something to Jesus. We honor you, Lord. We worship you, God. We worship you, God, for being sovereign. We thank you, Lord, for being a keeper. He is my faithful Father, calling me out of the dark. And nights cannot whisper away what he said in the light. Say, when I listen to the sound. 
has never lost a battle. So who are you, great mountain, that you should not follow? Jesus defeated the darkness, and he has never lost a battle. So who And he never will, he never will. 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 And
never will. He never will. And he never will. He never will. Somebody just declare, and he never will, he never will, he never will, he never will. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look to the Lord for a moment in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you for your ability. We thank you that there is nothing that is beyond you, nothing that exceeds you. You are a God who is all-knowing. You are a God who is forever present. You are a God who is forever powerful. And God, we glorify you on this morning. We thank you, Lord, whew, that there is nothing that can cause you to be defeated. And so, God, we declare even on this morning that not only are you not defeated, but we declare that as believers who are inside of you and believers who have you inside of us, that we too cannot be defeated. We rest in your victory. We rest in your ability. We declare that Jehovah God is our God, the El Shaddai, God with us. We thank you so much, God, for how you have caused us to arrive in this particular place. Now, God, I pray that you would guard our hearts, protect our minds, our spirits, our souls. Our souls become restless, so God, guard us. We pray, Lord, that you would speak to us this morning. Let he that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And cause us not just to be hearers of your word, but doers of the same. We will forever give your name. We declare that we're living epistles where men can read thereof. We declare there'll be change. 
Hallelujah. Thank you for it. Thank you for your faithfulness towards us. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, amen. And he never will. He never will. Woo, God, Lord Jesus. Y'all aren't here. I'm here. And I'm about to have church by myself um, because he never will. He never will. Hallelujah. Let the great mountain know that they have no ability to defeat you. Amen. And we thank God so much. I pray that everyone is being blessed on today. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor that, that as you are engaging in today's service, that you would just please encourage others' hearts as you engage. I can't hear your amens this morning, so I'm going to ask if you do me a favor by engaging those who are worshiping with you by every now and then adding your comment, adding your praise God to to the actual statements that we have there. Let them see you up on the bar. Let them say hi to you and all of that stuff. I wish all of you were here. I must, I must confess and admit, I miss y'all like crazy. Lord Jesus, if I've ever complained, Lord, if I've ever complained about the church, forgive me for I know not what I said. I miss all of you, all of you, all of you. I promise you I do and can't wait to see your faces can't wait to hug your necks um, if you allow me to hug your necks the next time we see. Let's make sure we're in prayer one for another. We have had some uh, family members who are part of our congregation who have lost loved ones. Uh, we also have had some uh, family members who have uh, contracted as well uh, some of the ailments that have been um, uh, plaguing our society and culture today. In fact, before we go into the work, come on, let's plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we declare that you are a healer. We declare that you're a healer. And we declare that healing is the children's bread. So God, we use, we use, we use your name, we use the blood, and we use the word of God. And we add these three components together, and we declare, God, that there is healing flowing through the household of our loved ones. We declare that there's healing flowing through the household, God, of friends and family members. And God, we pray, Lord, that you would touch their bodies. We pray, Lord, that you would go to Northwest Hospital in the name of Jesus and cause healing to go up and down those walls. We pray, God, that you would send healing to Columbia. We pray, God, that we also that you would send healing, God, to Johns Hopkins. And we pray, Lord, that as you are sending healing there, we pray, God, that even while your body and your spirit is there sending healing, we pray, God, that no one becomes healed and not know exactly who the healer is. We seek the healer more than we do the healing. And so, God, we pray right now in the precious and mighty name of Jesus that you would touch bodies, touch souls, touch our bodies, though, we pray, God, that you will build up our defense systems to be able to resist this COVID-19 and cause us to walk in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but also, God, God, we know that no matter how many masks we put on, how many times we put on gloves, how often we wash our hands, that we're still able to contract the virus, we need you, and we declare, God, we need you in this moment, and we pray, God, that as we cry to you, we thank you for being the God who hears our cry. And you, you, you take residence, Lord, even with our groan. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. I feel good. I don't know how good you feel, but I feel good. Um, I want to go into the word of the Lord on this morning. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me in your physical Bible or on your phone. If you don't have that with you, you actually um, in the... Uh, I believe it is the, the top left-hand corner of your um, stream. There is a place where you can click on the Word of God there so that you can pull a Bible down. And when you get there, go to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to do verses uh, 3 through 7, we, well, maybe even 1 through 7. Uh, but just come on and go with me with this Word uh, very quickly. I don't want to be before you too, too long. Uh, but just go with me, if you would, in this word of the Lord. It says, out of the King James Virgin, Version, it says this. It says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. I'm getting happy by myself again. Oh, Lord, I can't wait for y'all to be here so I won't get happy by myself. I'm going to read the first verse again. It says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, mercy came with your ministry. 
With your ministry came mercy. And the Bible says that with these two components that you have just received, that we faint not. We faint not. But have reconciled the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor in the word of God deceitfully, but by a manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, uh, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, an earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power of God may be of the power of God and not of us. And you know the rest of that passage. For we are troubled on every side, yet not in distress, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus may be made manifested, manifest in our body. I want to talk to you just for a moment on this morning. I'll never give up. Uh, somebody just declared with me, say, I'll never give up. 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 As we rehearse this passage of scripture, it's important for us to remember the church at Corinth and who they are. The church at Corinth is a church that is one that has a lot of issues that are going on. Uh, the church of Corinth has become a church of competition, a church of its own belief, its own structure, its own operating in its own wisdom. And as we understand who the church of Corinth is, Paul is here with his letter, his, in his second letter to the church of Corinth, letting them know and encouraging them that though you've had a lot of things happen in your life, is that there's also a ministry assignment that has been given to you. And I want us to be encouraged and to know on this morning that though you've had and experienced a lot of things in life, you've also received ministry. You've also received an assignment. You've also received a, a grace of God, an ability of God, a mercy from God. And the truth of the matter is for our lives is until we get to the place where we understand and accept our ministry from God, what we also get with that or when we get that, we also get accompanied with that is a grace from God, a grace to fulfill the assignment that we have received from God. And your grace from God is helping you to uh, embrace the totality of who God has called you to be. And I need you to understand and for all of us to understand and know that we all have a calling on our life. And there's a world that has been desperately looking and searching for where is Jesus in the midst of all of this? What is he up to? Uh, what does he have to say? And I need you to understand that if anyone's going to hear God in the midst of what we're in is that it must come out of your mouth. Somebody's expecting and anticipating for the believers to have something to say that is different than Dr. Fauci. We're expecting the believer to have something to say than President Trump. We're expecting believers to have something to say different than Joe Biden. We cannot utter the same exact things that Don Lemon is talking about. But we must, as believers, as the church of God, as the church of the living God, we must declare what is the heart and the plan of God. We must realize that in the 
midst of COVID-19, the church has a peculiar assignment. We are on a kingdom agenda in the midst of a moment. While the world is crying, the church of the living God must stand strong, cry aloud, and spare not. God, I'm getting happy by myself. I need to pace myself. Cry aloud and spare not is our assignment. It is our assignment that while the world is trying to figure out how they're going to handle it, that we let them know that the peace of God is something that will guard your heart and mind. While the world is trying to figure out how they can handle what they're in the midst of, we begin to preach the gospel of the Jesus Christ that we know, serve, and love and is inside of us. We are the people who cast light out of darkness. We are the people who realize that this Christ that we serve is able to shine a light in the midst of a dark situation. For we read just a couple weeks ago out of Psalm 139, because to you, God, light and darkness are the same they are the same but for me the believer I declare that I have the light within me somebody just say light within me I have the light within me and this light that I have within me is my call my assignment my duty to allow my light to shine what are you doing while you're in the house, are you allowing your light to shine? Or are you worried about the same things your neighbors are worried about? Are you stressed about what unbelievers are stressed about? Or are you in a place where you're realizing that there's an opportunity God has set up? Oh, good God Almighty. I'm sorry, y'all, because ain't nobody else here to get happy with me, so I got to get happy by myself. And I'll clap and say, oh, Lord, I feel like that. Uh, somebody say, I'm in the middle of an opportunity. I'm in the middle of an opportunity to show forth the strength of God, the power of God, the victory of God. And I am not, I am convinced that in this season that I must show forth who Christ is. It is my assignment, it is my kingdom assignment, my kingdom duty to show exactly who Christ is. I, I cannot look like everybody else does because I am of the kingdom of God and I preach that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's right here. It is present and it is time for us to realize and to walk in the middle of right now is the time and the season for us to embrace the kingdom kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is not from afar. It is not way off, but it is right here forever present in this moment. And we declare as kingdom citizens that we are ready to take charge and move forward with God's agenda. Move forward with God's agenda. I got I got so much to say. I don't have the time to say it. Uh, but let me, uh, let me, uh, I just feel like somebody in the spirit just typed uh, take your time, Bishop. I just feel like that's what somebody said. Just take your time, Bishop. So I'm going to take a little bit of my time. Uh, and so let me, let me, uh, let me move to, to, to some Old Testament scripture, if you don't mind. If you do mind, um, uh, just hang in there for a second, and, and God will make some things plain for you, and, and I think you'll be all right. Daniel, uh, the second chapter, and uh, verse... Uh, 44, uh, been this page here, so I don't lose my other pace. It says here, it says, and in the days of these kings, Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Could God all, ooh, y'all don't feel like dancing? Oh my God, okay. Huh. In the day where they have declared that every person who's running a nation is acting like a king, the Bible says, and the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom. Good God Almighty. Oh, God. Huh. While everybody else is looking to politicians and saying they're acting like kings, God says, in that day, I'm going to show you a kingdom. 
Good God Almighty. And I'm going to set up my own kingdom. Good God Almighty. And I need us to understand that we're not of this world like everybody else. We're part of God's kingdom. And because we're part of God's kingdom, it's our assignment in this day, in this season, to begin to execute with kingdom understanding. Ah, Kingdom understanding, you've heard this said before, uh, and nobody can say it better uh, than Bishop Tudor Bismarck, who said it before, is that you understand, uh, and nobody, I guess the scripture says it even better than he does, but that's why the weak say I'm strong. That's why the poor say that I'm rich, is because they have a kingdom understanding that says, though I see the reality that's right in front of me, and I'm not ignoring that, I also understand what I've heard from heavenly hosts. I also understand what God has dropped in my heart, and if God has dropped it in your heart. I promise you that that is your greatest reality. Whatever God has dropped in your heart. I guess I ought to read at least the last, the rest of verse 44. God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall, see, Erica, you know what you, what you were singing, which shall never be destroyed. <laughs> and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. You are in the midst of a kingdom revealed. There is the kingdom of God, and understand this, let me say, ah, somebody say, I'm in the midst of a kingdom reveal. I'm in the midst of a kingdom reveal. Come on, say it one more time in your house, out loud, just don't type it. I'm in the midst of a kingdom reveal. And because you are in the midst of a kingdom reveal, I need you to understand, I need you to know and believe then the scripture that declares to us that the kingdom does not come with observation. It is neither there here nor is it there, but the kingdom of God dwell within us. Good God Almighty. And if you're in the midst of a kingdom revealed and the kingdom of God dwell within us, then what God is about to show forth is himself. Good God Almighty. He's about to show forth himself inside of you. Christ in you being the hope of glory. God, Lord, have mercy. And I need us to understand that even as we move into the season, that when God is about to reveal himself, he's, that means he's about to show forth you in a way that you have not seen before. But it goes back to our earlier scripture that we have this treasure in earth and vessel with the excellency thereof, which means that I'm just this piece of clay. But in the midst of this clay is this power, is this strength, is this glory that is about to be revealed in measures that we have not seen before, have not seen before. If you have an experience that you've never had before, then that means you will have results that you've never seen before. Can I say it again? If you have an experience that you've never had before, that means you also will get results you've never seen before. Which means to me, which says to us that if I'm anticipating that this season I'm seeing enemies that I've never seen before, having experiences I've never had before, that means God will be doing something I've never seen before. Woo! God, Lord have mercy. And I need you to know that God is faithful. So don't you ever give up. Don't you ever, don't you ever give up because you're about to get a victory you've never seen before. You didn't know how to ask for this one. You didn't know how to anticipate this one. But it's a brand new victory that's coming into your life. And it's coming into our lives. Whew. Tap somebody and say, don't give up because your victory is nigh you. Your victory is right here in front of you. I'm sorry I got so excited. Y'all ain't here. I wanted to dance and shout. I found out about Corey Mickey. And so now, but he ain't here. And so I'm just teasing. But you've got a victory. And you can't dare give up. Daniel chapter 2, 44, 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 7. The victory that you're looking for is actually in you. 
I'm going to say it again. The victory that you're looking for is actually within you. The world going chaotic? Hear me very closely. I don't know if everyone has said this or not. God's got involvement in COVID-19. God is involved in COVID-19. It would not be out. I didn't say he created it, but it cannot have its strength. It would not be out. It would not be allowed. Anything, y'all could, oh, anything that exists must request permission for its very existence. If you are a theist and believe that God is involved, if you believe he's involved, he's utterly involved in every capacity of your life. Now, the question is, what does God want it to do in our lives? Why is it here? What is God looking for? What does God want? This becomes part of the mystery of the saints, but don't worry, it's for you to know the mysteries. I'll talk about it some other time. Because as we look at that scripture, we understand that if God were hungry, the Old Testament scripture says he wouldn't even tell you because you don't know how to feed him. But then in the New Testament scripture it says, he seeketh such that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Huh. What does God want from you? And during this time when we're on stay-at-home orders, while we're wearing masks to go to the grocery store, we're spraying off our groceries if they're delivered to the house with Lysol, we wear, use Clorox and Lysol wipes for everything we can find. Cameramen don't come to church unless they got gloves and the whole church smells like Lysol before they walk in. <laughs> With all of those things going on, the question is, what does God want? And are you willing to give? Or will this simply be a time where you know every show that's on Netflix? I offer salvation to you, my brother, my sister. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I promise you that this will be a dangerous season in your life. It's dangerous to die and not know Jesus Christ. I wish that all of us would know him. I was talking to a millennial the other day, and they said to me, this was a young lady, she said to me, she said, Bishop G, help me understand that why if you did not, if you weren't positive that Jesus was Lord, why you still would have no problem serving him? And the answer is really simple. One, the way of Christ is one that still causes me to be morally good. Two, the requirements for being saved is to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Three, salvation with Christianity does not involve my ability to perform in order to be saved but it involves the finished work of the cross. I'm saved because he did it. I'm righteous because he made me righteous. I love because he first loved. So he takes on the difficulty of the assignment and I walk in his finished works. So I pray if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, do me a favor. And you, you really have to click. It's at the bottom of the left-hand screen. It says Prayer Live. There's a little button down there. You have to click on that button and say, 
pray for you and click on and just say salvation. Just type salvation. And somebody will respond to that and help you pray. You can say right in your house, Lord Jesus, I confess that you are Lord and the Son of God. Save me from my sin. You're the only one who has the ability. I accept your finished work. And I crown you as Lord of my life. I believe this in my heart. And I confess it with my mind. In Jesus' name. That easy. The most powerful transaction. All right. God bless you. I'm going to give the services right back over to our host. I pray that you've been blessed. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I pray that you love on your family and your friends. Enjoy your Sunday. What a service. What a service. What a great word. Thank you, Thank you for joining us back. Uh, we have just received a great word from yes. Bishop Gregory yes. Dennis. And we are excited That's about good. the kingdom impact and the fact that God has a plan for where we are right now. Yes, we are all a part of God's plan. And we are thankful today. Yes, we We've now reached that point in time in our service where we all want to give. This is the opportunity that everybody can participate in. You can um, give your offering, your sacrifice, pay your tithes right from home. Yes. And there are several different ways that you can give while you're at home. And one of them is through the Givelify app. You can download the app on your phone mm -hmm. and you can search Singham Worship Center and you will be able to give right through that app. Secondly, you can go to our website at kingdomworshipcenter.org and you can select the giving tab and submit your gift that way. Lastly, you can give through Cash App at finance at kingdomworshipcenter.org. So we hoping if you're streaming in Kingdom Family, as well as all our other viewers, you can give through those three components. If you're a little bit old school and you prefer to mail it in, you can mail it right <laughs> into our church at 6419 yes. York Road, and that's in Towson, Maryland, zip code 21212. We hope you enjoyed the word on today. It was empowering, it was nourishing, and nourishing to our bodies. Yes, I'm so grateful yes. for our pastor. Bishop Greg is so anointing, I'm so thankful. And he said, how are you letting your light shine through this time? How are you letting your light shine while you're home? You know, you can be a blessing to someone else. And to speak about being a blessing, I wanna also share with you that here at Kingdom Worship Center, we had a food giveaway on this past Wednesday. And when I tell you that the Lord met us in this place, I'm so excited of the gifts that we have in this body to give away to those that are in need, to those that may need more than what they have because they don't have enough for Absolutely. everyone in their home. Our family is just so giving. I'm so grateful to be a part of this family. And let me just put this out there. We're doing it again on Wednesday coming. That's right, this Wednesday coming, we are asking volunteers to show up. We're asking you if you are in need or if you know someone is in need, please come out come to out. 6419 York Road. We are giving away free food, free food to those that come out and that need it. And let me also share with you that we have not forgotten about the children. The Yaya Ministry has something planned just for the children. And I'm excited that they can stay connected online uh, while we're going through this. And we also have the small groups. Please stay connected to your small groups. Absolutely. Join your small groups. Connect reach them. out to your shepherd. Reach out to your coaches so that they can engage with you throughout the week. And if you are in need of prayer, please go to Kingdom, I'm sorry, information at kingdomworshipcenter.org. We will be praying with you, we're praying for you, and we will also meet your special needs. That's what we're doing here at Kingdom Worship Center. Thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Sunday. I'm excited about God. I'm grateful Absolutely. for all he has done. Me as well. And what he's doing in our lives. Absolutely. Yes, so join us next Sunday at 10 a.m. Kingdom Worship Center, 6419 York Road, and join us online as well, kwc.online.church. See you next week. See you soon.